I definitely wanted to still do this because um, everything's still like you know fresh in my mind. I already have like everything I want to talk about. This is like one of those weeks where it's like everything kind of just you know happened the way it's supposed to happen. Like I didn't have to come in here and think of a topic. Like everything I wanted to talk about was like in plain sight today or this week. You know what I'm saying? Um, but. I'm excited, bro. I'm excited for this episode, man. We're almost to 20 episodes, bro. We're almost in, we almost there. We almost hit a dub, dub club. You know what I'm saying? But we gotta get through this episode first, man. Week by week, y'all know the vibes, man. But let's get right into it, man. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Why I'm Week show, man. This is episode 17. Episode 17, um, and today's title is dark horses bro so the nba playoffs are among us man and you know it started this weekend by the time that you guys are hearing this you know we've seen the first few games um on each side you know east and west and and to and today you know i wanted to you know Give my give my look my takes, bro. My takes on what I think the playoffs is gonna be, bro. I want to give you guys my dark horses um, for each side. As you guys know, that's the name of the freaking podcast this week. Um, but yeah, the NBA playoffs started with a bang, bro, and and that started with the play in games. Um, the teams that made it out are the ones I expected to, other than the Warriors, just because you know I thought the Warriors would end up beating um the grizzlies but you know after after losing to the lakers it was probably a little gassed but you know the actual playoffs are here man and as far as the east go i'm gonna go with my wizards man y'all know i'm a wizards fan um and i think that we are gonna be the dark horse of the east like if we can beat philly bro that's gonna shake a whole lot of stuff up man now, I'm not saying that, you know, we can get straight up, like, win a title. Like, off E, there's a lot of the talented teams out there. But, you know, and the East is, East is stacked this year, um, especially compared to the West because the West got a lot of injuries and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Like, all these teams are, you know, pretty good. Um, but I think that the Wizards got, you know, the potential is there. Um, if Rui plays the way he needs to play, um, get Bertans out of there, bro. Don't you give him like limited minutes, bro. Unless he on fire, man, you got to keep him out the game because he's just going to shoot us out the game, bro. He does that so many times um, that I can't even count. They call him a laser, but, you know, it's the shot selection for me. You know what I'm saying? It's the shot, shot selection. Um but yeah, that was just on um, my dark horse for the East. Uh, as far as you know, who's going to end up being in the Eastern Conference, you know, championship? I can't, I can't really call it at this point. I know the Nets are going to be there. I'm gonna give you guys like my finals predictions. But um, as far as the West, as far as the West, you know, I got the Suns as my dark horse just because, you know, everybody's expecting LeBron um, and the Lakers to, you know, basically win out because they're not really a seven seed. Um, so they're like the first like seven seed to actually be a favorite in a series, which is crazy um, just because of all the injuries that they had over the last season. And I'm just excited, bro. I'm just excited for, you know, this matchup. Uh, Devin Booker in the playoffs, you know, Chris Paul in the playoffs, um, and just, you know, seeing what they can do, bro, against against the Lakers. Uh, at this point, you know, AD has not really, like, been playing that well. You know, I, I'm sure that he'll lock in as this series goes along, but at least I think it's at least going to go six games. Um, but, you know, I think that the Suns can definitely win. Um but if not the Suns, I think Dallas is going to be the dark horse. The L.A. teams, one of them is going to be out, I think, early. Um, and that's that's all I got. But as far as the finals go, I still got Lakers versus Nets um, in the finals. I don't know who wins that matchup uh, just because, you know, it depends on, like, you know, how 
all of their series go. Um, depending on how, you know, on who starts sweeping people and, you know, how many games that people play and just, you know, fatigue and all that, like, it, that all plays a factor into it and then who gets home court advantage and stuff. So I think I think that, well, if, if that comes to it, the Nets will probably have home court advantage, but. You know, it's a it's a long road to that point, but you know we're gonna be covering it, man. We're gonna be covering it every week. Uh, that that the playoffs freaking you know last. Um, the series that I'm most excited for is the Knicks and the Hornets, just because those are two young teams, and the Knicks have had like their best season a really long time. Um, D Rose, you know, what I'm saying has been playing really good, uh, and. You know, I'm just appreciative of, like, his game just because, you know, he even spoke about, up about it recently. You know, everybody comparing, like, how he plays now to, you know, when he was, quote-unquote, in his prime, you know, um, athletically. Uh, but I don't think that's fair. You know, I think that's corny um, to, you know, always be like, you know, vintage D-Rose. Like, nah, this is D-Rose. Like, like, the thing is, you know, when players lose, like at least like the good ones, like the great ones, you know, when players start losing that, you know, athletic ability that really set them apart while they was young, you know, that's when they really start getting to their bag. Like, yes, D Rose can't freaking, well, I, I won't even say can't because who knows, like, you know, uh, stuff happening, like, you know, innately, like there's still instincts that come with the game. Like, he still might be able to hit jump like like he did <laughs> the dunk on Gordon Dragic um back in the day on somebody but like as you continue to mature in the league like your game matures and you become like a lot smarter and a lot better so I'm like bro like this isn't like vintage D Rose couldn't do what D Rose can do now you know what I'm saying like D Rose has a complete game now um and you know having the game slowed down for him probably helped him to even stay in the league at this point. We didn't see, you know, people that start off high and then have one injury and then that's it for him. You know what I'm saying? We've seen D-Rose come back multiple times and come back better. Um, and I think that, you know, this second go around in New York has really, um, has really shed light on that, you know what I'm saying? And all the work that he's put in, but, you know, I'm excited to see, um, uh, you know, Julius Randle in the playoffs again, uh, Trey Young, you know, I see Trey, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's going to be a freaking crazy series. It's, it's, it's very like reminiscent of, um, Utah versus the Nuggets. Um, like that type of energy. That's what I, that's what I get from it. Uh, as far as like the West, I don't really have like, you know, a matchup that I'm super excited about. Um, other than the first one with the Suns and the Lakers, like, you know, those are to me are pretty, pretty, pretty uh, standard. You know, the Nuggets. Yes, they had a good record this year, but they don't got Jamal Murray, um, and they ended up losing tonight. You know, um, Dame had like 34. So you know, I don't, I don't think they're gonna get swept or anything. But you know, what I'm saying if like the if Portland ends up winning that series, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but you know, that's that's pretty much it. I got the Lakers in the. Lakers and the Nets in the finals. Um, I hope it's the Suns, though. I want the Suns to win this year um, on the West, and I want the Nets to win if they don't win. So, um, and that's just, that's like you know, if Wizards do something crazy, that's even better because that's not that's my squad. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we all live in reality, and that's like that's a huge feat. Um, and it starts with Philly. So, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna have to freaking score our way into the next round. Um, but yeah, man, those, that's my NBA playoffs take. Uh, I'm super excited about it, man. I'm geeked about the playoffs. Um, as y'all know, like my streaming schedule has like, you know, pretty much been super late just because I've been watching these games, um, over the last few, last week. So, you know, playoff time, you know, y'all know how it is. Y'all know how it is. So I'm gonna have to try to, you know, start the streams early before all these games start, but we're going to see, we're going to see what's good. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about this week, man, is Insecure. So I'm pretty much almost done with the final season of Insecure on HBO before the fifth and final actual season comes out. Um, and, you know, 
I came to this realization that not only is Insecure goaded, bro, but they got the best soundtrack out of any show that I've ever, like, witnessed. Um, and, you know, it's, it's amazing to me, like, the way that they're able to put this show together and all the different storylines that, you know, um, have been told, man, because it's like, at certain times, it'd be feeling like it's reality TV, but, I mean, I don't even watch reality TV, so I can't, like, to me, it's like what I imagine reality TV to be like, but also, like, it's like, at some points, it gets, like, really real. Like, you know, like, these scenarios that people find, that the, the characters um, find themselves in um, are all real things that happen, like, you know, and you can find yourself in multiple characters, um, I find myself, you know, on you know, on both sides of the spectrum, um, as far as you know, who team Issa, team Molly type thing, uh, and I could see, you know, I've I've seen portions of it prior to watching the whole thing, so like at this point, I'm kind of just like waiting for certain stuff to happen. I haven't finished the season yet, but by the time you guys are probably hearing this or uh, watching this on YouTube, uh, I probably finished the season. But I wanted to say it now just because, like, you know, after watching season after season, you know, this this is, like, a one-of-a-kind show. Like, you know what I'm saying? Definitely one-of-a-kind. Um, and I'm excited to just see, like, you know, what's on the docket next. Like, they, uh, Issa has, you know, um, a black girl sketch comedy show. I, I might I might have butchered the name just now, but that's also on HBO, so I'm going to definitely check that out as well and um all the stuff that you know cool ray is going to be putting out and just that whole that whole thing because you know i've talked i've talked about it before on the pod like you know um having a good relationship with uh like the people at hbo and like you know knowing your worth and stuff like that and bringing you know projects to life like that's the goal you know what i'm saying like we haven't had a sketch show, like sketch comedy show in a really long time that was just like, you know, representative of us and also like really good. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen it, but it, from what I've seen, like from, you know, the promo and stuff like that, like I think it's going to be really good. It's involving a lot of a lot of dope actors. Um, and I know the writing is going to be on point, you know what I'm saying? And if it brings the same level of like, not just, I don't want to just say perfection, but, you know, like, I don't even know what the word would be. Like, if if everything that they do is a step up from Insecure, because you can see as the seasons grow, or as the seasons go along, the show grows and continues to get better, you know, um, as they, you know, get more experience and stuff like that. Like, it's a really dope show. It's a really dope show. Um, but... I think Insecure is goaded. Um, I definitely watch it multiple times. Uh, and, you know, it's. I'm glad I got to see it now. I'm glad I got to see it. And I'm excited for the fifth season. I'm excited for the fifth season. I don't know what's going to entail that, but, you know, I've seen all this stuff on Instagram about uh, them, you know, getting the soundtrack together and the last reads and all that. So it should be coming soon. It should be coming soon. Um, now. I also started a couple other shows. Well, I'm going to start one of them, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit now. Um, but the one I actually started was The Startup. Now, this is something that was on Netflix um, that, you know, I think it's going to be dope. Like, I've seen the first episode of it. Um, I haven't, you know, watched the whole thing, but I'm going to do a, you know, a stamp or gnaw on it. Um, as I continue to watch it, um, probably sometime this week. Uh, because, you know, this joint is, this joint is going to be dope. Like, I like the story that they're set up. I mean, I know I like my narco shows. I like, you know, the different, I don't, I don't know, like, not investigation, but, you know, just like, I don't know how, to, I don't know how else to describe it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I like, I just like, I guess like my narcos, cause it's not necessarily a narcos joint, but like, you know. Um, I like shows like this because like I thought the startup was you know going to be something different, and I've only watched the first episode and I can see where the startup aspect of the title is going to be in it. Um, 
So I'm excited to see that, you know, but, you know, the, like the Monday laundering and all that other stuff that, you know, the Ozarks are based around, like, I can see how this show is going to go. And I, I'm excited to see that joint. And then also, um, Love, Death, and Robots, uh, that, that new season just dropped on Netflix. And I love that series, um, uh, just because, you know, it's different. It's different. Um, Black Mirror was a show that, you know, I feel like uh, this show was mirrored after, but I think just because of, you know, the things that you can do in animation and stuff like that, it allows for this show to be better and to stay uh, not only just more consistent, but, you know, continuously getting better. I think that's um, one thing that separates it. So, you know, I'm going to start watching that as well. And I'm going to give you guys an update on, you know, how things are going with that. Um, and I also wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about the classics, bro. So um, after, you know, I've been doing the review thing, um, reviewing movies and uh, games and shows for a little while now, like consistently. And, you know, I realized that. Uh, I really have to start, you know, not only just like honing my craft from like an editing side or a recording side, but also just like my knowledge on just like movies and stuff, because there's certain nuances that you won't get if you don't watch the classics. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of classics that I haven't seen. Uh, I usually just stick to, you know, my lane, um, and things that like I know a lot about, like you know, superheroes and uh, like Marvel, DC, you know, Star Wars, like that type of that type of thing. Um, but after you know watching show or movies like uh, the Tom the Tom Clancy joint with Michael B, like and and realizing like you know. There's certain things, or and also just adjustably, like there's certain things that directors and stuff do that you know makes them stand out. Um, and I never really had a connection to directors before, you know. Um, and I want to start like just getting more knowledgeable and things like on how they frame stuff, so I can start making more connections in my videos. And I think that'll make my videos a lot better, um, just because you know, good is not good enough. For me like I'm trying to be great at this so uh, even even um, like doing podcasting uh, and doing these videos like I feel like there's still so much for me to, to learn you know as long as I just keep on doing it you know what I'm saying like I'm gonna be straight but a lot of times like just because I edit too you know what I'm saying like I know what the video is going to be, so I don't necessarily need to watch it, but, you know, I like watching, um, like, with my 2K videos, like, those, I never, like, I never doubted watching them, you know what I'm saying, and, and it's, maybe it's just because, you know, with this new season I'm in, like, I see all the, not just mistakes, but things I can do better that you know it's hard for me to to sit back and rewatch stuff um like i'll probably watch it like again but more so like through the the micro content that i also produce and put out for everybody else to see engage like my perspective on that um just because you know it's like for me like I take the, the best parts of the video and, and chop that up and then put those out on socials. And that's what gets the most, you know, not only just engagement, but reactions from people. And I want my whole video to be represented by that. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense, because, you know, everything's going to have like their peak moments and their, you know, climaxes and, you know, things like that. But. I want people to be engaged from the time they start watching to, you know, the end of the video. Cause that's how, you know, I am with my favorite YouTubers. So, 
you know, it's I, that's one thing that I did notice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to continue to get better at that. I am gonna try. I'm going to be better at that. Um, and just continuing to you know, invest in myself. I'm about to um, start, you know, building a production studio at the crib. Um, not for like, you know, making beats or like stuff like that, but for product shots for you know growth um, and also, you know possible things to add to the podcast and stuff like that, whether that's like sponsor reads and stuff like that, or, um, our own, like, ads and stuff that, you know, are promoting the stuff that we're working on, um, and really just taking, taking things to the next level, because I just want to, you know, I, I really, like, I really want to continue to not just tell stories, but document you know, and this is all part of that, you know what I'm saying, like, this podcast is, I've talked about it multiple times, it's, like, might be the most, like, crazy thing that I ever do, um, not crazy, but, like, powerful thing that I ever do, because of, it's just a documentation every week of where I'm at, and where I'm going, and what's happened, you know what I'm saying, like, including this episode, you have 17 like indications of like you know where I started and where I'm going you know and and I used to look at YouTube that way um I look at it more now this way but prior to this because you know in in school I did do like certain vlogs and stuff that you know you might be able to find on the internet I don't know if, if, if they're actually viewable now um but, you know, those are timestamps that I always, like, look back at and just be laughing at and stuff. Um, but, you know, as far as this channel, a lot of it has been about other people. Whether that was mixtapes or characters that I created, you know, on 2K or, you know, whatever. Whatever the case may be. But now it's getting to a place where it's like, okay, the main focus is, you know, my perspective and the way I look at stuff. So that's a really cool thing to look back on Um, and just see the, you know, growth in just uh, the skill set and things like that, uh, honing my craft. And, you know, it's just it's a dope thing to see. Um, Last thing I want to talk about, man, is. Uh, growth so we just well I just uh, we just went on a shoot not too long ago so we're starting to get more and more shots of the new apparel uh, and merch so if you guys haven't already you know definitely check out the merch um, at growth apparel on Instagram and you know I'm excited because I'm actually starting to tell the story behind growth um, whether that's in in the clips or the photos that we're getting and i'm excited to you know start sharing that with everybody um it's got a good reaction on socials like i posted on my personal page uh and a lot of people are are rocking with it and that's that's good to see i appreciate the love um and i'm excited for the drop man june 15th is the first like you know well the the official launch is it's it's live now but the official launch for growth and everything Yo, uh, <laughs> Helio, Helio, dude, man, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you for rocking with us. Um, and, you know, we're adding to everything. So I'm super excited, man. Uh, like I said, I'm building a studio, so the product shots are going to be dope. Um, that are starting to come through there and the content from there. And possible possible podcast stuff too you know what I'm saying with different interviews that I want to do with people uh, will start to get produced there so I don't want to you know give all the sauce away you know what I'm saying but I want to definitely let you not guys know that you know we are getting there we're getting there and you know what I'm saying it's gonna be dope so that's all I really got man for this episode of the I'm about to say something else. Wow. I hope the why I'm keep the podcast. I love to say growth because we talk about it, Jay. Um, but that's all I got, man. Appreciate y'all for coming through. Um, I could be watching anything or listening to anything in the world right now. So all the support is greatly appreciated. Um, 
hit that follow button, you know, subscribe um, on whatever platform you're listening to this too. And you know, I'm gonna catch y'all next week, man. Download the vibes, always keep on seeing from my boy G, and I'm gone. Peace.